Those are some unnatural movements. Oh no, what? What is that? I thought he could make that. This is a brand new instant replay effect I've been working on that I haven't seen done anywhere else on Twitch before. There are a lot of tutorials on YouTube for doing instant replays in OBS. I think Defrag probably has the best tutorial that I've ever seen. You guys should check it out. I'll link it in the description box. But but don't click away. Trust me, this one is different. You see, the way most streamers have instant replay set up, they just take a clip of the last 10 seconds and then maybe play it in the corner of their stream. Well, that's old, okay? That's like 2020. Wait, is it still 2020? This has been a long year. Whatever, my effect is the future because with this effect, the stream actually rewinds to 20 seconds ago and it even does this cool VHS distortion effect and does that cool sound that goes You know that sound that goes when you rewind a VHS tape? What is that? Then at any moment I can hit the button again and then it will fast forward my gameplay to catch up with my real time gameplay. It's a super cool effect. I'm gonna show you how I did that. So sit tight, cause this one's gonna be a long one. Quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Nerd or Die. If you haven't heard about Nerd or Die already, what's wrong with you? They have everything you need to upgrade your stream from alerts, panels, full-blown designs. And I work with Nerd or Die to give the first 100 of you guys 50% off your next order. All you need to do is use my link in the description, pick the design that you want, and then use the code NUTTY50 at checkout. The code is only gonna work for the first 100 of you, so you gotta be fast. But if you do miss out, don't worry, Nerd or Die is also holding the Pick Your Poison sale for the month of October, where they'll be announcing various sales throughout the month, or you can use the code SPOOKY25 to get 25% off throughout the whole month. And by the way, speaking of which, I just wanna show a picture of what Halloween looks like here in Australia. Look how spooky that is. So let's talk about what you're gonna need to pull off this effect. You're gonna need two OBS plugins. One of them is Dynamic Delay, which I talked about a couple weeks ago in one of my other videos. This is what's gonna allow you to do the rewinding, the fast forwarding, and even add slow-mo to your gameplay if you wanna do that. And you're also gonna need OBS Shader Filter to do that VHS distortion effect when you're rewinding and fast forwarding your gameplay. If you haven't heard about OBS Shader Filter before, it basically allows you to apply what's called a shader, which essentially just allows you to add effects to any source in OBS. And and the shader that we're going to be using to do that VHS distortion effect is actually something that had to be custom written. Not by me. You think I got the talent to do that? I just got Exeldro to make it for me. The download link for this custom shader will be in my Discord. You'll find it in the Design Files channel and it'll just be called VHS Shader, so just search for that. Links for everything Excuse will be me. in the- Yeah? So, sir, yes, yes. The, does this work with Streamlabs OBS? No, it doesn't. How many times do I have to tell you, Steven? Don't make me come back. <laughs> Oh, and I forgot, you're also going to need some kind of macro software to program a bunch of commands in OBS. So you can use any of these Stream Deck alternatives that I've talked about on this channel. You can use Touch Portal, Leoran Board, but ironically, you can't actually use a Stream Deck for this for reasons that I'll talk about in next week's video. All right. Boring stuff out of the way, let's start putting this effect together. We're gonna start with what I think is a pretty typical but simple layout for OBS. It's just a single scene with one source for your desktop and then another source for your webcam. Now the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take whatever your gameplay source is, so in this case your desktop, and then stuff it into a nested scene and then stuff that scene into another nested scene. Now if you're like, what the hell is a nested scene, Nutty? You can't just be throwing out random terms I've never heard about in here. I talked a little bit about what nested scenes are in another video, but essentially in OBS, you're able to add scenes into other scenes. And this is gonna be a really good example of why you wanna use nested scenes. Basically, all you need to do is to create two extra scenes. We're gonna call one of them gameplay and then the second one gameplay layer one. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your gameplay source, stuff that into layer one, and then get your layer one scene and then stuff that into your gameplay scene. And then now in your initial OBS scene, you're gonna replace the desktop source with your new gameplay scene. So basically to summarize, you've got your gameplay source in layer one and then layer one is in your gameplay scene and then your gameplay scene is in your initial OBS scene, which is what your viewers are actually gonna be looking at. So that's the OBS setup. Now we're gonna set up the rewinding and fast forwarding part. So to do that, you're gonna right click on layer one, go to filters and then add a dynamic delay filter. Now you're gonna see four sliders here that have a percentage next to them. And in a little bit, you're gonna be able to set a different hotkey for each of these sliders and essentially the percentage tells you how fast your gameplay source is going to be moving so essentially if i wanted to set it up so that my gameplay rewinds at 10 times speed i would set the fast backward slider to 
negative 1000%. And then same thing, when I'm fast forwarding my gameplay, if I wanted to play at 10 times speed, then I'd also set that to 1000%. Now the duration is gonna be a time in seconds and it's going to be the target delay for your gameplay. Now that sounds confusing because it was confusing to me, but think of it this way. If I wanted to rewind my gameplay to the past, how far back do I wanna rewind to? That amount of time is the duration. So if I want to rewind my stream to 20 seconds ago, I'd set the duration to 20 seconds. And then same thing for slow motion. How long would I wanna apply slow motion for? Well, however long it takes until my gameplay becomes 20 seconds delayed for my real-time gameplay. Now for the easing duration, just set this to zero. I don't wanna explain what this does because it's just gonna confuse you even more. But let's set some hotkeys now so you can actually see the dynamic delay in action. So to do that, go into your settings and go to hotkeys and then scroll down to where your layer one scene is. And you should see some extra hotkeys for fast forward, fast backward, slow forward, fast backward, etc. I'm gonna set a hotkey for fast forward and fast backward, which is gonna be for the fast forward and rewind effect. And then now what you should notice is when I hit my fast backward hotkey, key, my gameplay should rewind until it becomes 20 seconds delayed from my real-time gameplay. And then when I hit my fast forward hotkey, it should fast forward my gameplay until it catches up to my real-time gameplay. So hopefully that made sense to you. If it didn't, go back and rewatch that part of the video so I make more ad rev. I mean, um, so you understand it better. But I'm gonna assume that you guys are all good with that. We're gonna move on to setting up our macro softwares. Now for that, I'm gonna be using Touch Portal just because I think Touch Portal works best for what we're gonna be doing. If you've never used Touch Portal before, I recommend looking up some tutorials first because I'm gonna be assuming that you know at least the basics of how to use it. Anyway, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be setting up a button that when you press the button it's going to rewind the gameplay and then when you press it again it's going to fast forward the gameplay so create a new button and we're going to set up this button to act like a switch that has an on state and an off state and if you're familiar with programming this is really simple you just add an if action and an else action now what we want is when the button is in its off state we want it to rewind and then when it's in its on state we want it to fast forward so the logic for that is really simple if the button state is off then press your rewind hotkey and if the button state is on, press your fast forward hotkey. So for me, I'm gonna add a virtual key press for my rewind hotkey, which I set to F14, and then another one for my fast forward hotkey, which I set to F15. F14, F15, what the hell is that? I don't have that on my keyboard. Yeah, I know, I don't have that on my keyboard either. In fact, I don't have any F keys on my tiny ass keyboard. But fun fact, old keyboards actually had a row of F13 to F24 keys on them. It's just modern keyboards don't have them anymore. But luckily, OBS actually still recognizes those keys. Anyway, now that that's done, you can add a label to your button. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change the label on the button every time that I press it so that I know what the key does. All right, now comes the fun part, which is adding that VHS distortion effect. Now, this part isn't totally necessary, but I think this is going to be the thing that really sells this effect. Like, your viewers' minds are going to be totally blown. They're going to be like, whoa, VHS, what is this? The... The dinosaur era? I bet you there's gonna be like one of you guys out there that's gonna be like, wait a minute. They didn't have VHS in the dinosaur times? Well, how do you explain how they filmed Land Before Time? Anyway, dinosaurs aside. <laughs> We're gonna add our VHS filter by right-clicking on our gameplay scene, going to filters, and then adding a user-defined shader. Click on load shader from text file, and then select the VHS shader that you downloaded from the Discord earlier. Now the default settings look great. This is exactly what we want, but I'm actually gonna disable that filter for now and then add a second VHS shader. And I'm gonna call this one VHS Lite. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn down some of these settings to create a weaker version of our VHS distortion filter. So what you should have is two VHS filters, a strong version and a weak version. We'll also add one more filter just to make our gameplay black and white. So when we're doing the rewind effect, we're gonna make our gameplay go black and white as well. And you can do that by adding a color correction filter and then turning the saturation slider all the way down to negative one. So if you enable the strong VHS filter and the black and white filter, this is exactly what we want our gameplay to look like while it's rewinding. And to make that work, we have to go back into Touch Portal and do a little bit more work on our macro. And this is what our macro is gonna look like. We're gonna turn on the VHS filter and the black and white filter at the same time, 
Then we're gonna hold it by adding a two second delay. And then after that two second delay, we're gonna turn off both of those filters. Now the length of the delay you put in, you're gonna have to calculate yourself. But for me, because I'm rewinding my gameplay by 20 seconds at 10 times speed, 20 divided by 10, is how I reach two seconds. You're also gonna wanna copy all these commands for the else statement of your macro because you also want all of these filters to turn on when you're fast forwarding your gameplay. Okay, so we're nearly done, but I wanted to add a few more details to this effect. I wanted to add some text that actually says rewind while it's rewinding and fast forward when it's fast forwarding. So I created these two PNG files that just say rewind and fast forward in some retro text font that I found somewhere online. Then I imported both of those images into my gameplay scene in OBS. And then I just added a few more lines to my macro to show and hide that image along with the VHS filter and the black and white filter. Okay, a couple more steps. I promise we're nearly done. I also wanted to add a little overlay to the instant replay that says instant replay with a red blinking dot. This is just to let my viewers know that what they're watching is a replay and not my real time gameplay. So I created a WebM file in HitFilm Express and then I imported that WebM file into my gameplay scene. Then in my touch portal macro, after my stream has rewound, rewound, rewinded, whatever the word is, after it's rewinded, show this WebM file. And then when I fast forward it again, hide this WebM file. I also, at the same time as enabling that WebM file, I want to enable that VHS light filter so that when my viewers are watching the instant replay, you just get this nice little subtle wiggle in the gameplay footage that makes it look like they're watching something from the past. Okay, okay, I know this is a lot to take in, but final, final step is we want to add sound to this effect. So when we're doing that rewind and fast forward animation, we want to get that <laughs> sound effect going. You know the <laughs> sound effect that I mean? Find a sound effect from anywhere that you like. This is what my sound effect sounds like. Then in your touch portal macro, you want to add a play audio action and then point the file to the audio file of your sound effect. And that's it. I know there was a lot of steps to cover, so I'm just gonna show you what my final macro looks like. So pause this video, copy down all of the steps here. If you've done all these steps right, when you hit the button on your phone, it's gonna do this. Got an extended and then when you hit it again, it's gonna do this. Optics here, sniper. <laughs> All right, so now that your brain is totally fried, I wanna talk about some of the limitations for this effect so that you know what to expect. Number one, this does not support audio. So when you do an instant replay, it's not actually gonna rewind your audio as well. So be aware of that. Also be aware that this requires a lot of RAM, like a lot of RAM. Like you have to understand that in order to pull up 20 seconds of footage at the touch of a button, your PC needs to store 20 seconds of footage somewhere in your PC and it happens to store that footage in system memory. And by the way, that's all uncompressed video. So for my example, I'm only storing 20 seconds of 1080p 60 footage and that's using up like anywhere from six to 10 gigs of RAM, which isn't a huge issue for me because I have 32 gigs of RAM in my PC, but a lot of you guys out there probably don't have 32 gigs of RAM. So just make sure that you have enough memory to do this effect or go out and download some more RAM if you need to. Um, dedicated RAM. And finally, one thing I've noticed is that randomly my GPU usage when using the dynamic delay plugin will shoot up all the way to like 90% and I've got a 1080 Ti and I can't really nail down why that happens. It seems to coincide with any time that I switch scenes, but then it doesn't always happen. So not really sure what's causing that, but I recommend that you guys do some testing on your own part and then give us some feedback because I've been trying to talk with Exeldro and nail down why it's using so much GPU, but we can't work it out. So we'd really like some feedback so we can get this fixed and get this out working for everyone. But yeah, that is the video. Guys, if you have any questions about this effect or you just wanna hang out with a community of really cool streamers, make sure to join the Discord. You guys can also catch me on my Twitch streams. I stream four nights a week and we're always talking about how to innovate streams, make them cool and all, all, this, cool, all this crazy cool stuff, right? Anyway, I'm gonna do like literally anything else that isn't just sitting here and recording like 
for five hours straight. So I'll see you guys next week.